Praise the Lord. This is your brother in the Lord, Preacher Warren. Listen, I'm going to teach you how to deal with a jealous, I'm going to say it again, jealous supervisor. Mm, I know a lot of you got some jealous supervisors on your job, jealous managers on your job, jealous co-workers on your job. You got snakes on your job. I'm going to teach you how to deal with this not only how to deal with it, but how to over, overcome it. God, the Bible declares, thanks be to God which gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Many times it doesn't seem like that we have the victory because it seems like your prayers are not being answered. Like to me, the more you pray, the worse they get. Yeah, but I hear the Lord say every pit that they dig for you, they're going to fall in their own pit. Some things the Lord allow us to go through uh, to make us stronger and push us closer to him. If you read the book of Romans, chapter number five, uh, there's a difference between a trial and a tribulation. Uh, a trial comes to test your faith. A trial may last for a week, a day, or a week, uh, just a month. But a tribulation can last for a year or years. A tribulation lasts longer than a trial, but it's still a test. It's still persecution. Uh, the Bible talks about it in the book of Romans, chapter number five. Um, read it. Patience works as spirits. Okay, a lot of times God want to build us, build up our patience to build up character, and then He'll move the enemy. I hear you use the enemy to bless you, and they don't even know why they're blessing you because the Bible said that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Okay, in order for me to teach you how to overcome your jealous supervisors or your managers or even envious pastors or ministers even in your church i had to talk from my own experience because experience is the best teacher i know i've been preaching i've been preaching the gospel since i was six years old so i've been telling my experiences if you go on my youtube i made three videos called hated by older men of god part one part two part three and i'm talking about my experiences being a young anointed child I've uh, been preaching the gospel, just like I said, since I was a boy. And growing up in my teenage years into my 20s, up to now, I, I believe it's going to bless you. If you want to, you can also go to my YouTube channel. You can see all my revivals from years ago. From 1999, I made my first video outside of the church, in another church, amen, outside of my home church, after I left and branched out into my own ministry called Flame of Fire. Go to part six, Flame of Fire, Apostle Warren David Adams, W-A-R-R-E-N, David, you know how to spell David like in the Bible, Adams, A-D-A-M-S, Apostle Warren David Adams, Flame of Fire, part six, you can go to part nine, now part ten, you'll see my videos, uh, there's another video I made called Put the Creep Under Your Feet, oh that's going to be a good one there, Apostle Warren David Adams, Put the Creep Under Your Feet. As a church revival, you'll see a lot of my videos from back in the day. You can type in Preacher Warren in action. You can see that. You see all my revivals. Praise God. But going back to my experiences, I want to share my experiences with you to help somebody. Uh, when I had a job when I was 21 years old, uh, first I was working in the church as a maintenance man. When I was 15 years old as a teenager, and I remember when the enemy was fighting against me even on the job, just to make a long story short, I was wondering why these Jamaican maintenance men were so jealous of me and coming against me and trying to put more work on me that I should not even be doing. I was the one cleaning the whole church, that mega church by myself from nighttime all the way to the morning time. Never forget this. Come to find out, I didn't realize that the bosses who was of the church who gave me my paycheck, they was the ones that paid me more money purposely than my own boss, the ones who was over my boss, paid me more money than my own boss. And I was wondering why they was, hey, how you this man, yo, this man, yo, he just got it. He's only eight, he's only 15 years old. How he's getting a big a, a bigger paycheck than ours? I was wondering where it was coming from. I began to find out they deliberately paid me more money than my own boss. That was done deliberately to turn my boss and my co-workers against me. Did it out of spite did it out of jealousy because they knew I was just not only just a maintenance young man as 15 years old, I was a young preacher playing the bass, guitar for the choir. God was using me to cast out devils at an early age. 
So all the men of God who was in charge did it out of spite. So I got laid off the job at the time. I was 15 years old because they were starting fights on the job with me. And so I got in trouble. I ended up beating them down the job. That's what they wanted. They wanted to start something. Sometimes you got supervisors who are jealous of you who want to try to get you fired off the job. I want to teach you how to deal with jealous managers and jealous supervisors. I'm going to teach you how to deal with I went and got another job when I was 21 years old. Uh, I was born in Harlem on 125th Street. Uh, I was born in Harlem, ra rather, on 135th Street, Harlem Hospital. Raised up in Harlem, also raised in the Bronx. Started preaching the gospel in the streets there, too. Okay, I went and got another job. It was called Mott 125, never forget it, right in front of the Apollo Theater. I'm going to share some of my experiences. So my first day on the job, uh, actually it was a pastor there who hooked me up with this job. And I was actually was Bishop William at Bonham, my pastor, such a great man of God. Even though I was going through a lot with him, but he was still God's servant. Praise God. Every man of God has faults. That's why we must pray for them. But he hooked me up with this job at Mott 125. Uh, went on Mott 125. Never forget, it was a mall. They had different stores in this mall. So I was 21 years old. I think it was 20 or 21. I know I, knew I was around that age bracket. First day on the job. There was a man named, uh, I'll never forget it. <laughs> I don't want to mention his name out in the open, but he had the same last name I had. So I said, Mr. Adams. He might have been my family member, <laughs> but he had the same last name I had. Uh, first time meeting him, he was my manager. Never forget this, praise the Lord. My first day on the job. So he says to me, I was surprised what he said to me. He said, so, man, it's a wireman. He said, man, I heard you a minister. Man, I've been hearing stories about you, man, that you can preach. So, wow, you heard about me like that? So, uh, wow. Well, they, they said I can preach. Well, to God be the glory. I know I can't preach. It's the Holy Ghost that does the preaching through me, but thank you. So he started having me feeling good. So I'm like, wow, this man is like a nice manager. I spoke too soon. Then he go on to say to me, man, you know, you're a minister. He goes, man, you're a good looking young man. He said, I know you be hitting them girls up in the tracks. I said, what? He said, I know you be hitting on the women in church. I said, no, I'm a virgin. Uh, yes, I get desires from women because that's only normal, but I'm a virgin. I'm trying to hold on and live holy. He said, no, I don't believe that. He said, I don't believe that. He said, man, you got to be hitting them girls. I know them girls are after you the way you preach. The man never even heard me preach, but he heard about me. So I'm like, why is this man worrying about this for? All he should be is, all he should be doing is concentrating on my work. This is my first day on the job. Already, he's talking about, I don't believe you can live holy. I couldn't believe this man was saying this to me, my manager. I'm 21, about 20, 21 years old at the time. Up in Harlem, my 125. It's not there now. Never forget it. <laughs> it's going to bless somebody. He goes, I don't believe you can live holy. I said, yes, I can live holy. God is able to keep me from falling. If I fall, I can get back up. He said, nah, man, I don't believe you can live holy. You're a good-looking minister. I know you got them girls and girls after you in the church. I said, no, no. I'm like, my mind, why is this man trying to find something on me? He should be worrying about me. He should be concentrating, rather, on my work. He said, okay, this is the first day on the job. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. He said, I don't believe you can live holy. I said, the devil is a lie. Already the devil has been started up on the job through his manager. The enemy recognized who I was. Then he goes, and by the way, I'm a Mason. Oh, Mason. You a Freemason. I didn't ask him what he was, but he says he's a Freemason. Sometimes God make people tell themselves. I don't even know this man. That's my manager, my first day on the job. So I know Mason is a lot of them do witchcraft, devil worship. Some of you say they don't do it, but I had a grandfather who was a Mason. He pastored four churches. He was a Reverend up in North Carolina. He used to walk benches with his eyes closed. The Lord used him under the anointing before he got the Holy Ghost, but he was in the Masonic Lodge. Had the long stick and the black robe on. And thank God my grandmother talked him out of it. He talked him out of the Freemasons. He was only on the third degree level. So thank God he got out of it. Praise God. So God used my grandmother to save his soul. So I know about the Masons. I know about the Freemasons. So anyway, he tells me, yo, I'm a Freemason. He said, I don't believe you can live holy. The devil was using this man already. So I knew he was a demon. Own manager. I said, Lord, the devil know who I am. I was 21 years old. So here I, I started my first day of work. Already this young man was, already my manager was jealous. Did not do nothing to this man. Started putting all this extra work on me. <laughs> that I know 
that I was not supposed to do on this job. I said, Lord, I hope my pastor didn't know about this man being a mason and deliberately hooked this man up to me as a manager. It like to me, every person I met in the organization was a mason. Now, they don't go by the title mason in the apostolic church, but a lot of them got the, uh, they have the King Tuck statues up in the office. King Tuck have nothing to do with the King of Kings. Come on, somebody. Now, I know in the Baptist church, they go by the title the Freemasons, uh, Eastern Stars. But if they in the apostolic churches, if they with the Eastern Stars or the Freemasons, they don't go by that title. They make us have a King Tuck statue in the office. King, Stuck, King Tuck had nothing to do with the King of Kings. Okay, I'm not saying my pastor was one. He was a man of God, but he was connected to people like that. So, okay, going back to my story, the manager all of a sudden now, he started getting girls on the job to try to seduce me. I knew it was him. One girl, now here I'm cleaning the bathroom. One girl came up in there, took her bra off. I, I, I lie not. She showed her breasts, followed me right into the bathroom while I'm trying to clean the bathroom, trying to seduce me, because I knew that this manager put this girl up to this. I'm a man, so God had to keep me. I thank God for my wife now, Basila. But this is years ago. I only been married for two years, but this is years ago, way before I got married. I was about 20, 20 21 years old at the time. Here, this, my manager had women trying to seduce me on the job. They touched in my arms and touched, tried to touch me in private parts. I had to plead the blood. Here, I'm trying to do my work. I said, oh, this ain't nothing but the devil. And then the big giant security guard got mad. He was about 300 something pounds. Big giant. He got jealous because the women wasn't paying him no mind. So now he wanted to start a fight with me on the job. So he jumped in my face. We got into it. Believe it or not, I beat the man down right on that job. I had a bad temper at the time. I was about 20, 21 years old at the time, even though I was a minister, but I was still growing. Beat the big giant up in front of everybody, laid him out. He went going, he went running to the manager, told the manager I started trouble with him. So already I was going through with play haters on the job, which is trying to seduce me on the job. My own manager took my, I don't believe you can live holy. I remember the devil using him. So he was a mason. Okay, all this. I knew this was a setup by the enemy. Here I'm trying to make money. Here I'm trying to make ends meet. Here I'm going through stuff in the church, going through stuff in the home. But this is what I'm talking about, that when you're anointed by God, there's a price. So when you see God use Preacher Warren, there's a cup I have to drink like many of you out there is drinking the cup. Oh, praise the Lord. They that live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. But I'm here to encourage you as well. The Bible also said many are the afflictions of the righteous. Oh, hallelujah. But the Lord will deliver them out of them all. So now this is what I'm going to do on the job. Which is trying to seduce me. And then because I didn't fall into seduction, trying to hold on and live holy. Of course, I was tempted because I was a man, but God kept me. So I was working on that job. I was working seven days a week, working overtime. There was another young witch. She came down there and put roots in front of my door. Trying to put a love spell. Never forget it. I saw it. Trying to do doing rituals in front of my door. I had an office downstairs, the maintenance office. I had to come out of my office and plead the blood. I said, devil, you a liar. I bind the demons of lust and seduction and the spirits of Delilah and Jezebel and Aphrodite in the name of Jesus Christ. I was going to do spiritual warfare on the job. Never forget this. Come to find out so much had went on. It was just raising hell. Raising hell. Never forget this. I was laid off the job just because I didn't fall to a woman. My manager fired me. I said, Lord, why am I going to this? Never forget this. Then I got another job. Then another one. Then going through stuff. So now let me teach you how to deal with these jealous supervisors. A lot of these supervisors and managers are nothing but witches and warlocks. Not all of them. But the devil programs them to come against any child of God who loves God. Even if you're not saved yet, they, can, they have a sense of your destiny. The demon in them have a sense of your destiny that God is going to use you in a mighty way. The enemy in them knows that. Some got Ouija boards. Some got OG boards. A lot of them are not even qualified to be a supervisor. You're like, wow, how, did, how, she, got a, how she got that job as a supervisor and she don't even know what she's doing. You're like, wow, how did he get that job as a manager and he don't know what in the world he's doing and he asking you for help, or she asking you for help, and they don't know what they're doing. Some of them slept their way up. They slept with the boss. Some got a seducing spirit. 
showing breast, chest, everything out. And because the boss, he's still a man, he could be married. A lot of women are seducing the boss on the job. So now he gives her a raise just because they had sex. I'm going to keep it real. A lot of my cheating on their wife, cheating on, on their husbands, even on the job. That's why your husband coming home late with a hickey on his neck because he going with the secretary. He and the secretary is going to hell if he don't stop cheating on his wife and playing church. When the Bible said that adulteress would not inherit the kingdom of God because marriage is about being faithful. If you're not going to be faithful, don't get married. Come on, come on, come on. It's the better off or worse who thick and thin unto the end. Now this stuff goes on in jobs and in churches. Pastor cheating on his wife. Now um, there's some pastors that... It, there's some pastors in the church who are nothing but playboys. Up there having sex with every girl he prayed for, praying for every woman that he up there in her apartment. He up there coming home back to his wife with a hickey on his neck, and you know your wife did not give you the hickey. It's that woman in that church that you've been sleeping with who gave you the hickey. You and the woman is going to hell if you don't repent. Pastors I'm talking about. That's what the Bible declares. Woe be to you pastors who scattered my flock and who scattered my sheep. If you fall, then say, Lord, forgive me. Like David repenting. God ain't going to excuse you because you're a bishop. All right, so I'm going to teach you how to deal with this because some of these supervisors like to show breasts and wear mini skirts. So then, then she seduce her manager. They all somewhere humping. Somewhere. They're going to hump their way straight to hell. And this is why he gives her a raise. And all of a sudden now, according to him, he's qualified uh, she's qualified by the boss to be the supervisor and the manager. Not because she's qualified because she got an education. It's because she slept with the boss. So now here you come along, woman. You're saved and sanctified. You're beautiful inside and out. You're like Esther. The name Esther means star. And your supervisor is a Jezebel and you are Esther. All right. There's a class right there. Because darkness and light has no fellowship. So now God gave you favor on the job. And because people love you on the job, they see the light of God in you. Now the supervisor get jealous or the manager get jealous and they want to try to fire you off the job. There's nothing wrong you did. It's the God that's in you that's disturbing the demons that's in them. Because the Bible said darkness and light has no fellowship. So because they see you got favor with the people. Look at this. According to the Bible, Saul got jealous of David in the Bible because King Saul seeing that the people love David. You know the story of David. God used David to slay Goliath. Remember that story of David and Goliath? David was a little boy when God used David. God can use a little child. God can use a little boy. God can use a little girl. Hallelujah. The Bible said a child shall lead them. So because God used David at an early age, Israel loved David. God gave David favor. He had favor with God and man. Praise the Lord. So at that time, the Bible said Saul got jealous of David because he saw the favor of God was with David. So he tried to stop his destiny. He put a hit on David. He tried to kill him. But you cannot stop who God has blessed. You cannot curse who God has blessed. Who God has blessed. Oh, I feel like preaching. No man can curse. Remember when Balak came to Balaam in the book of Numbers, chapter number 22. <laughs> he told Balaam, I want you to put a curse on Israel for these people. I, um, they are a great number of people. These are blessed people. But God had the angel tell Balaam, you cannot curse who God is blessed. These are a blessed people. Don't you dare try to put a curse on these people. Our God will curse you. No weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. Ah, la, 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 la. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. This is for somebody here today. So you're going to do on the job. You're going to do spiritual warfare on your job. A lot of them are in fraternities from the colleges. A lot of in those fraternities, they do some crazy things. They do rituals, devil worshiping rituals. And they can be educated. And, that, and the devil gave them that job because they sold their soul to the, to the devil for fame and function. I'm going to help you. You wonder why, well, how did this evil old witch got a job to be a supervisor or this evil man got a job to be a manager? They're always targeting you because the demon know that you're a child of God, but they ain't in trouble. Like I told my wife, Priscilla, it remind me of the road runner and the coyote. <laughs> Every time the, uh, the coyote tried to get the road runner, he had a rock to try to hit the coyote, try to drop the rock on the coyote. You know what happened. Remember um, the road runner and the coyote? Beep, beep. Beep, beep. What happened? 
it backfired. The rock fell on that coyote. Every trap that the coyote set for the roadrunner, beep, 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 beep. What happened? <laughs> that coyote fell in his own trap. Well, that coyote represents the devil and the roadrunner represents the saint of God. We are running for Jesus. Every pit that they dig for you, they're going to fall in their own pit. Even though I know it seems like nothing is going your way, but God said, I'm going to turn the tables around in your favor. The name of my sermon is, this demon will be terminated. <laughs> I feel Jesus, this demon will be terminated. Many of you are surrounded by devil worshipers on your job and they know you're a child of God and the devil knows you're trying to pay the rent and the bills and you're trying to put a curse on your finances. But I hear the Lord saying that God is going to bless you. Huh? God will provide. Huh? I know your manager is coming against you. I know your boss is coming against you. But because Jesus is the boss of all Pentecost, woo, he's the sauce of all Pentecost. I heard the Rockets preach that a long time ago. Jesus is the boss of all Pentecost. But I want to add something through that Jesus is a source of all Pentecost. God will make you the boss above your wicked boss. Woo! Hallelujah. God said, I'll make you the head and not the tail. God said, I'll make you above only and not beneath. The devil put an X on you, but God put a check on you. I felt that right there. The devil said you were zero, but God said, I'll make you a hero. And God said, thanks be to God, was giving you the victory. You got the victory, brother. Hallelujah. I see greatness in you. Hallelujah. You're going to walk into a blessing today. Thank you, Jesus. You are too blessed to be stressed. You're too anointed to be disappointed. Sometimes you must encourage yourself and pat yourself on the back and say, I'm too blessed to be stressed. Ain't nothing wrong with encouraging yourself. This demon be trying to take your joy. But tell the devil, I will not kill myself. I came too far. Whoa, hallelujah. God bless your daughter. There's a blessing coming to you right now. God will turn your tears into joy. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy will come in the morning time. This is your time for joy. This is your time for victory. I know you love Jesus. You've been loving Jesus for a long time, but you've been fought by family. Ah, uh, you've been black sheep. You've been fought in the church. But ain't no weapon that's fallen against you shall prosper. I see a prophetic anointing upon your life. You are the one that God has chose. He's going to use you in a mighty way. You be encouraged, daughter. This demon will be terminated. And you, God will raise you above your enemy. Woo! Hallelujah! Amen, my sister. Have a great day today. Thank God for the woman of God. We want to encourage you today. This demon will be terminated. Ah, I know you've been going through it for a long time on your job. The devil been trying to bottom your finances. But David said, I once was young. Ha, but now I'm old. Ha, but I never, never, never. Ha, rrr, I never, never seen the righteous. Ha, forsaken, now I receive. Begging for bread. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, touch them in the fire, man. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Touch them in the fire truck. I want the firemen to get the fire of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. God said this demon will be terminated. God will fight your battles. God will give you victory over your enemies. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Hallelujah. Don't wait till the battle is over, but shout right now. I, I dare somebody to start praising God right now. You don't need no music. Woo. I feel like cut me a step. You don't need no music to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When I think of the goodness of Jesus ha, and all he's done for me, I could have been dead, could have got shot in the hood, but thank God he spared my life like he spared your life. God's got a great plan for your life. You may not see it, whoa, but say, Lord, I surrender. Lord, forgive me for my sins. Wash my sins away. Lord, I repent. Oh, hallelujah. I just want to tell my testimony. This is how you deal with that jealous enemy of yours, your supervisor. Give them into the, give them into the hands of God. Because they try to push your button. They're trying to get you out your character. Because they're trying to get you fired. But guess what? I hear the Lord saying, even if they fire you, the devil may push you out. But God is pushing you up. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. They may fire you off your job, but God is going to push you up. Sometimes the devil is doing you a favor. When they push you out, they're really pushing you up. Huh. Thank you, Jesus. Huh. God bless your daughter and your son. Thank you so much. You're moving on up. Hallelujah. They used to sing that song on Jefferson's. Moving on up to the east side where we're going to move up into heaven. There's higher heights and deeper depths in God. 
Ha! I feel Jesus. Just when they think they're kicking you out, they're really pushing you up. Ha <laughs> ha! The devil is doing you a favor. God will give you favor. Whoa! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. I said God will give you a favor. Guess when they're kicking you? They really 